So we'll do a chair class. Um, first, I would like to go over the anatomy of the chair. It's pretty simple, standard. This is the chair seat, brightly obvious. And this is the chair back. So as much as there is no actual chair back, there's a kind of a gap between, there's a frame that um, would actually encase the back. So this is what that's called. And then you've got chair legs. And if you flip it upside down, you see other aspects of the chair more clearly. So this is the crossbar. It's usually between the two back legs. Sometimes it's on the front, but um, standard is two back legs. And then lastly, you have the bucket of the chair. And we'll, we'll do this a bunch. We'll use the chair in this orientation. So it's important to say that it's tilty uh, laterally from right to left. So you wanna, when you're taking your two hands into the chair, you wanna place both of your hands on either side of the chair at the same time. It's very important. Or it will wobble and it's a hard surface. If you're taking one thing on the bucket of the chair, like your foot, we will do triangle, for instance, with the foot in the chair. You wanna place your foot in the middle of the chair to, again, avoid that um, lateral movement from side to side. So for this practice, I, I used a blanket and two blocks. You'll want those things. Um, so procure them. Place them out of the way. We'll just use the chair for a little bit and we'll use it exactly how it is right now, but we'll slide it all the way to the wall so that the chair back goes right where the wall and the floor meet. And then we'll face the chair in a tabletop and place your hands with your palms facing down on either side of the crossbar. So your hands are in between the two legs. And then walk your knees back so that they pretty much land right underneath your pelvis with your arms extended long. And then start to press down into the chair bar and you'll notice your chest kind of lift. Keep that and wrap your outer arms down very strongly and pull your shoulder blades apart from one another. And then keep that as you let your chest kind of sink down closer towards the floor and keep the actions in the arms and then roll onto the outside of your feet. Uh, I'm so sorry, the outside of your hands. So your palms flip towards one another. Press the back of your hands into the inside of the chair legs. Keep lifting your inner arms strongly up. Keep widening your outer shoulder blades down. Keep letting your chest sink. And then start to pull the sides of your waist back a lot. And as the pelvis goes back, think of stretching the tip of your head forward so much that you feel a lengthening on either side of your neck. And then look forward so you can see, place your palms back down onto the crossbar, walk your knees forward for a second and just sit down onto your butt. We'll do down dog and we're gonna take the hands and place them onto the tips of the chair legs and then slip the hands all the way down so you can then take your thumbs on the inside of the chair bucket, the bucket of the chair. And then tuck your toes and press yourself back into a down dog. Take your feet wide at first, the width of your sticky mat. If you can get your heels to land, land your heels. Press forward into the chair, lift your inner arms up Wrap your outer shoulders down. Pull your shoulder blades apart and then keep that as you sink your chest down towards your knees. And that's the action of the upper body. Bring attention and awareness to your lower body now. So plug the four corners of your feet into the floor. Contract your quadriceps until you feel your knees tighten and lift. And then drive the front of your thighs to the back of your thighs. And now as your two outer hips pull back, again, think of stretching your head forward towards the chair so much that you feel the two sides of your neck get really long. And 
and then bring your knees down onto the floor and sit down for a sec. We'll do another variation of a down dog. Reach your arms out in front of you and flip your palms forward. Bring your fingers all the way together and then place your two hands onto the bucket of the chair inside as wide as they go pretty much. Tuck your toes and come into a down dog. And see what happens when you slide your hands all the way down. So the front of your wrists actually go all the way to the, the edge of the bucket of the chair. Press your fingers and your knuckles forward. Lift your inner arms up. Wrap your outer arms down. Widen your shoulder blades and sink your chest. Four corners of the feet press. Tops of the thighs drive back until you feel your knees tighten. Pull your outer hips back and stretch your neck forward. And then bring your knees down onto the floor and sit down onto your butt. Okay, we'll pro progress it. Take your arms out in front of you and you don't have to do this. Feel it out. You can stop in child's pose and stay there the whole time, okay? Bring your fingers all the way to touch and then turn your fingers away from one another off to the sides and then all the way down towards the floor. Place your hands on either side of the bucket of the chair and stay here for a second and bend your elbows ever so slightly. And if that's okay, see what happens when you walk your hands up a little bit. So maybe you could even find the top edge of the bucket. If all that's feeling fine, re-straighten your arms, tuck your toes under, and come into a down dog. You can always bend your knees. That will give you more space and more pliancy. Let's all do it. Bend your knees. Let's just, let's see how that goes. Lift your heels up even more space and then press your fingertips just a little bit, your knuckles just a little bit into the chair and do all those same aforementioned actions. Outer shoulders down. Shoulder blades pull apart. Let your chest sink down a little bit and then pull the sides of your hips back and the tip of your head forward. And then bring your knees down if they're not already. Slide your hands down a little bit and come on out. And then take your hands onto the, the top tips of the chair seat, uh, chair legs. Take your feet down onto the floor, stand up and place your right foot right dab into the middle of the bucket. And then walk your left foot forward, your back foot forward, bend your right knee and notice that that will increase the stretch that you're feeling on the back of your calf. Notice how it feels to lighten the load of your toes away from the chair, but keep bending your right knee. So you might feel a contraction on the front of your shin when you do that. And then you can stay right there if you wish, or you can place your left foot, step it up onto the crossbar. Straighten your right leg and see how that feels. And then if you dare, if you want to, you can walk your hands up on the wall. Don't quite let the back of your heel touch the, that edge of the, of the bucket because it's kind of sharp and doesn't feel great. So if that's you and it's kind of digging into the back of your Achilles tendon, I've been there before and I don't like that. So just, just pop your foot up a little, like come out and just pop your foot up a little higher. And then feel how you don't have much space, I imagine, but feel how it is to micro bend your right knee. Feel how it is to lighten the toes away from the chair. And then lastly, what about bringing your pelvis slightly forward towards the wall? And then slowly, slowly, slowly take your hands back onto the tips of the chair, if you're up here, and step your left foot down and then step your right foot down. Let's do the other side. Take your left foot right down up in the middle of the bucket. 
walk your right foot forward a little bit. Bend your left leg, the front leg, increase the stretch on the back of your leg, and then think of lightening your toes away from the bucket, the front of your foot. Your heel could even kind of dig into the chair more as the toes lift more. And then you'll add not only a big, long um, tensile load to the back of the leg, you'll add a compressive load to the front of the shin. So when you lift your toes enough, you'll start to feel a burn on the front of your, um, at the front of your shin, which is a great way to work. And then if you're game, you can step your right foot onto the crossbar. Just be careful up here, you don't have to come up here. If you're feeling okay and you wanna go deeper, then walk your hands up the wall. Try not to let your foot slide down too far that it touches the edge of the chair. And then you, if you're up, I mean either way, you could micro bend and straighten, micro bend and straighten your left leg, just like the tiniest bit. You can lighten your left toes away from the chair. Okay, be careful on the descent. Take your hands one at a time onto the tips of the chair legs, step your right foot back, and then step your left foot back. Come on up to stand, and then turn around from the chair, face away, take your hands to the front of your mat-ish, and then step one foot into the bucket of the chair, and then one foot into the bucket of the chair. And then you can wiggle wiggle your feet wider if you wish. Bend your knees, keep them bent for a sec and then push your hands into the floor now, like you were doing before. Wrap your outer shoulders down, pull your shoulder blades apart. Lift your inner upper arms and sink your chest back towards your legs. And then from the sides of your pelvis going back and up, stretch the tip of your head forward. And then optional, you can stay here, absolutely hold for a longer uh, hold and walk your hands back as far as they go, which is tricky, and step one foot up onto the wall and the other foot up onto the wall. And then same stuff, everyone redo it, even if you're still in down dog. Inner hands press. Inner shoulders wrap forward. So it's like you're wrapping your armpits towards your ears. Pull your shoulder blades apart and pull the heart towards your legs and then the sides of your waist go back. The tops of your thighs drive back. And as the tops of the, or the outer hips go back and up, think of stretching the two sides of your neck, long, away from your shoulders. And then be careful on the descent again, take your feet down onto the chair. Wherever you are, bring your knees down onto the ground for a second, and take a break. And then turn to face the chair again. Take your hands onto the tips, uh, the tips of the legs again. Tuck your toes and stand up for a second. And then take your right foot right into the middle of the chair. Right into the middle. And walk your left foot back a good margin. And turn your left toes slightly to the left, towards one o'clock maybe. Bend your right leg, just like you've been doing for the calf stretch stuff. Wrap your outer right hip back this time. And by pressing into your right foot, remember to cut the back of your right hip so far back that the front leg starts to straighten and then contract your quadriceps. So you could stay here, absolutely. You could take your hands on the, onto the wall. You can walk them down as far as you wish. I'm gonna take mine a little lower because I'm trying to get a good amount of wrist extension. There we go. And it's the same stuff if your hands are in the wall, inner hands, plug, outer shoulders, wrap down. Shoulder blades are wide and your chest is moving down. And then wherever you are, take your right hand on the crossbar. Turn your left toes a little bit further to the left and reach your left arm up. Come into a triangle. 
And while you're here, flip the grip. So turn your palm the other way. So it's now facing up and you're gripping it that way. Plug through the four corners of each of your feet. Contract your quadriceps. Cut your outer right hip back. And then start to turn your right ribs towards your left ribs. And then as the right hand presses into the chair, reach the left hand up. And as your hips pull away from the wall, stretch the tip of your head towards it. And then bend your right knee outside your arm. And you could slip your right hand further to the left if you wish. Bend your right elbow enough that you can hook your shoulder inside your knee. Reach your left fingertips forward, maybe catch the wall with your fingertips. Press and power through your feet. Keep sharpening your back leg. Keep cutting your outer right hip back. And then use the arm and the leg and the chair to a certain degree. Press your leg and your arm against one another. Twist upwards. And then as much as you turn up, like maybe even look up with your right eye, think of stretching the tip of your head so far forward that it lengthens the two sides of your neck. And then look down, take your hands onto the tips of the chair legs again, and step your right foot back. And then just bring your bum way back in space, like an Arda Uttanasana variation, slash kind of down dog variation. And notice the difference on the two sides. Ass back, head forward. And then look where you're going. So you can step your left foot into the middle of the bucket of the chair. Walk your right foot back a good amount and turn your right toes to one o'clock. And then bend your front leg. Cut the outer left hip back. And then with that, it's almost like there's a string pulled to the front part of your thigh and it pulls it so far back that the leg straightens. You can walk your hands down the chair. You can walk your hands to the wall. For today's sequence, I'm going to do the wall thing. But it is pretty sweet to just walk your arms down further on the chair and give yourself a better fold. Maybe try that. Um, and then maybe try, maybe try this, what I'm doing. Do all the actions of the arms. And then take your left hand down onto the chair bar. Turn your right toes a little bit further to the right and reach your right arm up. And then turn your left palm up so it faces the ceiling. Power through the four corners of your feet. Contract your quadriceps and cut your outer left hip back really strongly. I always find I, I don't do that enough. And then as you press your left hand deeper into the crossbar, Reach your right fingertips further to the sky. Twist your left ribs to your right ribs. Widen your collarbones and then get super long through both sides of your neck and bring your left eye up towards your hand. And then bend your left knee outside your arm. Bend your left arm, you'll hook it better. Flip your right palm towards the wall and see if your fingers can touch the wall. If you need to slide your left hand further to the right and grip along the crossbar a little bit differently than you are, that's absolutely fine. Plug the back foot down. Keep tacking the left hip back. Press your arm and your leg against one another and twist further up. Think of reaching beyond the wall into the wall with your fingers and stretch the tip of your head towards the wall as well. And then turn your chin up. Left eye looks up. And then eyes look down. Take your hands on the tips of the chair legs and step your left foot back. Walk your feet back a little bit more maybe. And keep your palms facing down. Push down into the tips of the chair. Do all the actions of the arms. Inner arms up, widen shoulder blades, sink chest.
and then walk your feet forward and come on up. We'll use the blanket for a sec. So if you unfold it so it looks something like this, place the towel in the bucket of the chair and then take the two top corners of the chair and pull it up and wrap some of the blanket as padding really over the crossbar. So you have padding in the bucket of the chair. I think it was Carrie Awerko. Carrie Awerko showed me this, A. And then B um, said something about like you're, you're stuffing, um, you're making a pie with the bucket of the chair and you're kind of tucking the bottom of the pie in um, to make the bottom of the crust. So this is also just padding because that edge is a little bit intense. So turn away from the chair in a tabletop and bring your left knee into the bucket of the chair and take the front of your shin onto the sidebar, which is underneath the blanket. And then step your right foot forward. And if you're like, holy moly, then you can stay absolutely 100% right here. This is good for you. And then if you want to come up, you could interlace your fingers on your right thigh if you wish. And let's just stay where we are, wherever you are now. And it's almost the same actions. I can feel my outer right side body kind of folding. Take your hands to your outer hips. Let's do that. And wrap your outer right hip down with your right hand so you heavy it. And then grab the, the bony part of your hip with your left hand and pull that up. And then use your thumbs as a way to move your tailbone down. And you'll feel a, an increase most likely on the front of your left thigh. So lots of things you can do if you feel like you want a, a bigger uh, elongation. You can reach your arms back. Whoa, where are those guys? You can reach your arms back, there they are. And find with your palms facing down first. So it's like a Bekasen formation. So palms down, you can bend your elbows, and then you can press the chair legs forward, even so much that the, the chair back comes off the ground a little bit, bigger stretch. Think of your belly button lifting, think of your heart lifting, and pull your collarbones wider apart. And then lengthen the two sides of your neck. And then land the chair if you have that. Let's do one more thing. Add the arms, reach the arms up and search for the wall behind you. Maybe touch them, touch the wall with your fingertips. And then it's the same mechanics. Outer shoulders forward. Lift the heart, lengthen through the sides of your neck. All the stuff. And then look forward and take your hands down onto the floor and bring your front shin onto the ground first. And then step your left knee forward, second. Let's do the other side. Bring your right knee into the bucket of the chair. Let it slide down all the way to that edge. And step your left foot forward. And then you can take your hands and interlace them on your left thigh for a sec. And then just to kind of align the hips, take your hands on the sides of your hips, grab the outer fleshy part of your left butt and pull that down and grab the bony part on the outside of your right hip and lift it up. And then use your thumbs as a way to guide your butt towards the floor. So I like the cue of bring the top of the butt to the bottom of the butt. Think of the belly button lifting and then start to get more spacious in your upper body. With your palms facing down, you can catch the tips of the chair legs and find Bekasen, extend your shoulders. And then you can press them just a little bit further forward so maybe the chair back comes off the floor. The more you press forward, the bigger stretch. Now tail still down, belly still up, lift your heart, widen your collarbones, and lengthen the sides of your neck. So you don't just overdo extending in your cervical spine. And then bring the chair back onto the floor. 
Take your hands down onto the ground. Step your left shin onto the floor first. Step your right shin forward second. Boom. Okay. Let's get rid of the blankie for a sec. And we'll flip this guy in its proper position. And then slide the chair closer to the wall, but have a gap between the wall and the chair back. Maybe three to six inches. And then you'll sit up onto the chair, facing away from the wall. Just make sure your sitting bones can be on the other side of the wall. And then take your feet all the way to touch. Take your right hand down and grab the chair back. Nice and high, it doesn't have to be down there too much. And then reach your left arm up towards the ceiling, twist to your right and hook your left arm outside of your leg. And then you can walk your right hand up the wall and you can actually kind of tuck as much of your left shoulder outside your leg as much as possible and place your hand down onto the chair seat or onto the chair back and you can walk it down a little bit. I'm gonna go chair seat, that felt good. Think of moving your left hip back. Move your chest away from the wall. Externally rotate both your arms, so wrap your armpits away from you. And then lengthen the two sides of your neck, both sides. Bend your right elbow, that's your top elbow, and spin your elbow in the same direction that you're facing, and then notice how much turn you can get out of that. And then slowly, slowly, slowly release that. Take a second in the middle. So this time you take your left hand and grab the chair back on, on the side. Reach the right arm up and twist to the left and then hook your right arm outside of your thigh. You can kind of tuck, tuck a few times. And then reach your left arm up the wall, palm faces into the wall, and start to straighten your right arm down and either grab the chair seat or grab the side of the chair back. You choose. You can walk your left arm back behind you as much as you wish. And then pull your outer right hip in the direction of the wall. Keep that, pull your heart away from the wall. Externally rotate both your arms, spin your armpits in the same direction that you're turning towards, and then twist more. It helps to bend your left elbow, to lift the left shoulder head up more, and then notice you can turn more. Two sides of your neck, super duper long. And then slowly come on out and find the middle. Okay, we're gonna take the chair and turn it so that if you were sitting in the chair, you would face the wall. It's gonna be different for everyone, but roughly the size of your legs, if you were to go like this, it's gonna be a little bit shorter, I imagine, but it's gonna depend on you. First, really, really important that you do this. You cannot do this without using the blocks, okay? So you wanna lift the chair up and take the blocks underneath the chair legs that are there. And the reason why you cannot do it without the blocks is because the blocks serve as a way to tilt the chair so that it doesn't tilt forward when we go onto the chair. You'll see in a second if that's confusing. You wanna use a padding. So take the blanket and I like to fold it like this so it's a longer rectangle and place it right onto the chair back. Now I'm gonna bring, why don't you real quick just watch me. I'm taking my knees down onto the chair seat and then I place my hands onto the blanket, onto the chair back essentially, and push that down. And I lean forward a little bit and I can take one of my feet on the wall, it's right there. And then that helps me to bring 
myself down safely. It feels safer. It's safe going into it either way. So I somehow managed to get that on the first try. If you, if you don't, um, then it's all good. If this does, if you don't make a good fit, then you want to take the chair further forward or further back. You do you. I like to have my feet plugged into the wall. It just feels nice. So the blanket is at the very top of the femurs. It's not on the bony protrusions on the front of your hips. It's not on the ASIS. Definitely not. And you can absolutely kind of wiggle around just a little baby bit. So that you get it just right. Okay, so walk your hands forward a whole bunch and do a down dog like this. We did so many down dogs today. Same mechanics, inner hands, press. Inner shoulders, lift. Outer shoulders, hug down. And then as the arm bones go up, your shoulder blades go wide and your chest goes down. How long is your neck? Can you stretch the tip of your head towards the space in between your thumbs? And then take your left hand and sneak it in between the chair legs. Grab the chair leg that's to your right if you're looking at it. And then start to walk your right hand, the down dog arm, walk it over towards your left a bunch. And start to twist, bend your left elbow and twist your ribs towards the right side of the room. Right hand presses down, same mechanics. Outer shoulder wraps down. Shoulder blades pull apart and you twist. Neck is super long even though you might be looking underneath your armpit. If you're looking up, look up with your left eye. Okay, and then come back to the middle. Find down dog with your hands, with your arms, and notice maybe the difference in your two sides. Sneak your right arm in between the two chair legs and grab the left chair leg nice and low. So grab the outer chair leg. Then start to walk your left hand over to the right, a fair margin to like the right side of your mat. Press your left hand down, wrap your outer left shoulder down, pull your shoulder blades apart. Start to bend your right elbow, that's the hand, the arm that's grabbing the chair, and twist to your left. And then let that go. And maybe walk your feet out so wide that they kind of dangle off the wall. And bring your heels towards your bum. Keep your knees heavy so you don't feel the sensation of kind of wiping out. And then you can even take your arms off to the side with your palms facing up. Remember, knees heavy, butt up. Head is a bowling ball. It's twice as heavy. Let it relax. And then take your hands down onto the floor, widen your feet again, and re-plug your feet into the wall. Listen very carefully. Walk your hands back. Take them on the edges of the blocks. Take them up onto the chair legs, and then let your knees go down onto the chair seat. Okay, so now you're all good to go. Walk your hands up the crossbar. Bring your pelvis back. Walk your hands up to the chair seat, all the way up to the chair back. And come on up. And come on out of that. And do one more kind of pretty active back bend. So turn the chair away from the wall again. So if you're sitting in the chair, you would be facing away from it. And we're going to use the blanket again. And we're also going to use uh, some guesswork. 
as to how far away we need to be from the wall. It's always going to change. So it's about maybe an arm length away from the wall. So what's important here, very, very important, is to bring the bottoms of your feet onto the chair legs, the very bottom. So your toes are folded onto the floor and your heels are propped up onto the, onto the chair legs, giving your, your ankles an angle. And then take your, you might wanna watch again, it's one of those things where you watch it and then do it, okay? Take your hands on either side of the chair back, right low towards the seat. Slide your bum forward, so your butt's right on the, the front edge of the chair, and lean back so you find your shoulder blades kind of rested on the blanket. And then push your hands down, lift your bum up, look back and find the wall, and then take your hands on the wall. And then you can tuck and tuck your shoulders underneath you a little bit. And then you can walk your hands down the wall as far as you want. So you're doing upward facing bow. Walk your hands as close or far, as far apart as you wish. It's totally up to you. Move your tailbone forward away from the wall. Press your inner hands into the wall. Wrap your outer shoulders in the direction you're looking. Pull your shoulder blades apart and then pull your heart towards the wall. Hmm. Lengthen the two sides of your neck. And then walk your hands up the wall. Find the chair with your bum. Take your hands on either side of the chair back and slowly come back up to sit. Whew. Okay, slide the chair again closer to the wall, but have a little gap between the wall and the chair back and stand onto the chair, sit onto the chair. Take your feet all the way together. Wiggle your butt around so you kind of dodge those bony protrusions on your bum and fold down over your legs. And then walk your hands down as far as they want to go. So we flex the spine just before we do some inversions and then rest. So do the opposite action that we've been doing, really round your back. So think of moving your tailbone down and widening your low back from right to left. Keep pulling your shoulder blades apart. You can tuck your chin. And then slowly come on out of that and sit down onto the chair like you, like you normally would. And widen your feet so that your legs go into this kind of goddess position, like a squat. And then fold down in between your legs and take your arms in between the chair legs and grab a hold of them, the, 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 the ones furthest away from you. Pin your tailbone into the chair Pull your lumbar, your low back from side to side. Puff up your mid back and pull your shoulder blades apart. And then let your head be heavy, heavy, heavy. And then let go of the chair legs when you're ready and roll yourself up. So, and slide the chair all the way to the wall. Actually, don't do that. Slide the chair a little bit further away from the wall. And we'll do shoulder stand, which I'm sure many of you have done. If you have a bolster or a stack of blankets, you could take them here. I don't need the blankets. Um, you could also take two blocks if they're soft, especially they'll be real good um, if they're smaller blocks. And if they're soft, you could actually use the blocks probably. And if not, you could pad it up with a blanket. That might be a little high for some of us though. So use some padding if you're um, 
if you know that you need that for shoulder stand, I'm gonna take my stuff away because I know that I don't need it. And for shoulder stand, you're gonna want a bigger gap between the chair and the wall than you had in previous postures. So slide that away, maybe a shin length distance away from the wall and sit onto the chair backwards, facing the wrong way, and bring the back of your knees onto the chair back. And then pull on the chair, lift your chest up, and slowly lean back, trust yourself, you got this. And then take your hands onto the chair legs, take your elbows onto the ground. And then bring your shoulders onto the floor. Bring your arms in between the chair legs, take the bottoms of your feet onto the wall, and tuck your shoulders really well onto the ground. So you really want the top parts of your shoulders on the floor. And then walk your feet up if you wish until your legs are straight. Roll your inner arms up. Widen your collarbones. And lift your heart. If your feet are plugged into the wall, plug them, four corners. Contract your quadriceps and do a little roll of your tailbone away from your head. So as soon as I start practicing shoulder stand, it really brings a whole bunch of <laughs> calmness to my body, which you can hear in my voice. I can't talk. Calms right down. The mother pose nurtures you, puts you to sleep, tells you a story, you go to bed. There's different variations of the legs. You could bring the soles of the feet together and let your knees go off to the side into a Baddha shape. Another variation would be to place the soles of your feet onto the seat of the chair. Roll your inner thighs down. And you could cross just at the ankles and let your knees go off to the side until your shins touch the inside of the chair back. So choose your option and choose how long you want to stay like this. If it feels really good and you're getting relaxed and it feels safe and supported and easy, then stay in it for as long as you can. The benefits will increase the longer you stay in it. And just for time's sake, I'm gonna come out. So when you do come out, undo your arms from inside the chair legs, grab higher up towards the seat and just kind of walk your shoulders back a bunch until you can rest your bum onto the ground and your, your entire back onto the ground. And then you can bring the soles of your feet to touch, have your ankles inside the chair back again, let your knees go wide. If that's comfortable, you stay like that. If you want, you could wiggle yourself even further back. Bring your knees closer together so it's really just the back of your calves that lay flat against the chair seat. I really like this one. It, it's a really nice knee traction and just a gentle inversion. If your legs don't feel good in either of those positions and you just wanna lay them down onto the floor, it's great. And again, you choose for how long you want to stay in Shavasana and close that when you're ready. I encourage you to stay as long as you can. Thanks for practicing. Namaste.